Too many times you see a player identified in a headline as an insert amount flop, and that's bothered me a little bit. The me in question is me, by the way. I'm Adrian, welcome to Rabona TV, where today, today we're doing an opinion piece. Today we're talking about transfer fees and how many fans use that against the players at times, something that I think is completely unfair. I've also linked to a community poll below to see where you guys stand on this, and also feel free to fire away in the comment section of this one or on the poll, as I always love reading what you guys have to say, especially with a video of this nature. It should be especially interesting. Especially, especially, especially. Let's get into it, let's talk. It's Friday, so it's a bit more of a relaxed video, though I do have some research papers I'll reference as well. So first, I think we need to shift our focus away from seeing the transfer fees as the valuation attached to a player, and more like the value the club places on the rights to the player, or just the amount of money it took to get the rights to them. The narrative has shifted so much toward the 100 million euro man, or the most valuable right back in the world, or what have you in the media, to the point where it's almost as if it's some of these media tropes have changed how the fans view a player. They see players with a monetary value next to them as if they are a commodity that has a set market price. Player X is a Lamborghini, while player Y is a reliable Toyota Corolla. But with the way the market has moved these past few years, this past decade really, Corollas are being bought at Lamborghini prices, and depending on at which point you're selling your Corolla, what kind of form your Corolla is in, and to which buyer and what kind of financial power they have that you can exploit, that you can bleed out of them, you can make quite the profit off of your Corolla, much more than perhaps it's actually worth. But let's put the car stuff aside for now. <laughs> Assigning a number value next to a player, buying into, no pun intended, but buying into the amount that they are transferred for and treating that as gospel to the actual quality of the player is a fool's game at this point, and unfair to the players. As I mentioned earlier, shifting the focus towards seeing the transfer fee as just the key or the rights to having a player on your side is much healthier, and it shifts the burden, if you will, of that price onto the club instead. Instead of reacting angrily to Pogba and saying that it's a joke that he was valued at 90 million pounds, I mean, Pogba didn't set the price, Juve did. Raiola added a hefty chunk to it, and United agreed that this was the right signing for them to make. Pogba didn't force anyone's hands. Two clubs and an agent came up with the price. And speaking of guys like Raiola and agents adding millions in agent fees to transfer these days, the inflation of the market makes it even more of a joke to hold players accountable for the fees that clubs agree on to transfer their rights. Here's a study from the CIES Football Observatory monthly report from September 2019, who by their own words, quote, since its creation in 2005, the CIES Football Observatory has been monitoring the transfer of players through information published by clubs and the media. The 47th edition of the monthly report analyzes from a financial perspective paid transactions having taken place since 2010, which involved teams from the five major European championships, the English Premier League, the Spanish La Liga, the German Bundesliga, the Italian Serie A, and the French Ligue 1. Perfect. So we all understand what the Football Observatory are, what they do, and what their credentials are. So what were their findings from September of 2019, pre-pandemic, when it comes to spending and the inflating of transfer fees? All things being equal, the price of players during the last transfer window, summer 2019, went up by 31% compared to the previous year. Since 2014, the annual inflation growth rate on the transfer market for Big Five League footballers has been 26%. With respect to 2011, the same player costs now almost three times more. Three times as much means that David De Gea would have been 75 million instead of 25 million euros. 18 year old Lukaku would have cost 45 million euros. Downing, going to Liverpool, it would have cost them 66 million euros. That's sort of where we're at now. Numbers aren't representative of quality. Or at least I hope that's where we were at pre-pandemic, and here's hoping the bubble bursts and fees go down to normal prices, not only for the players and the pressure that price takes put on them, but for the financial longevity of clubs. And I mean, let's talk about those two things, actually. Again, noted by CIES Football Observatory, the recent prominence of transfers being paid in installments 
shows just how strange the finances are of clubs already, and with these inflated prices that can hurt the fans, and I understand the frustration that they show toward players who are underperforming by their standards. I mean, my personal view of it will be different to many, I'm sure, but so long as my club isn't drowning financially and the result of their spending isn't hurting the fan base through rising ticket prices or the match they experience becoming more expensive, how much they spend to get the rights to a player doesn't really bother me much, let alone will I hold a player accountable to the amount that my club agreed to pay for them. For example, I'm not going to double down on Darwin Nunez for every miss he's had simply because he was our club record signing. If your frustration toward a player is due to the rising ticket prices that are an outcome of these overpriced, inflated transfers of players, then you absolutely have the right to be frustrated when your club is punishing the fan base, while at the same time you aren't seeing the results you expected from that expenditure. But I think it's definitely worth asking yourself where the frustration should be placed. Should it be placed upon the player, as he becomes the poster boy of the fees your club agreed to pay for him? or on the club itself, who ultimately made these decisions with the club they bought the player from and the agent that was involved. All of this sort of heaps pressure onto the players. I mean, these public fees that are attached to their names, the expectation that they create as a result of it, and I mean, the pressure is already high to begin with. I, I personally feel incredibly uncomfortable when someone spends their own money to buy me a drink or a meal or something like that. Imagine how I would absolutely collapse if a club spent 50 to 60 million, 120 million on me, and then paid me gargantuan wages on top of that. Of course I would be nervy and it would affect my performance. I'd be fighting a losing battle from the outset. The expectations would be way too high. But I mean, footballers are humans too, and that pressure alone can be enough to cause them to underperform. And then you add in all of the calls from supporters of your own club and rivals that claim you are stealing a living or a fraud thanks to the value associated with you that you didn't even come up with. I mean, wow. Constantly reminding players of their value isn't helpful for them, let alone the adjustment window that we allow players getting smaller and smaller all the time in search of instant results. We expect them to be perfect from the outset or shortly after, when we used to be a little more patient in the past, I found. Now, ideally, transfer fees would be completely private, but that's not at all a possibility as transparency is absolutely necessary in an extremely corrupt sport like football. And it's especially necessary for those clubs that are publicly traded on the stock market. They have to have even more transparency as they have to make their books available to the public and in turn make their liabilities available, etc. So that, to be honest, would take a lot of pressure and toxicity out of the game if these transfer fees were private. And that would be great. It would kill these lazy titles like this as well, which are just cruel. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be able to point out a transfer that seemed pointless for other reasons or that the player didn't live up to the expectation, but calling them the 40 million pound flop and stuff like that just adds to this aspect of football fandom that doesn't really help anyone, in my opinion, and takes the heat off of the clubs that came up with the numbers, agreed to them, and contributed to the inflating prices in the market and puts it on the players adding further pressure to them, essentially starting a new job somewhere. <laughs> but like I said, this is a dialogue, man. So let me know in the comments what you think about this. And if you think that judging players by their price tag and associating that with them is totally fine. And we should hold the players accountable for the prices clubs pay for them. I'm really looking forward to the comments, guys. You guys always open up my eyes to things and help me see things in a different light. So I'm excited for this one. But beyond that, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then a like is appreciated. If you didn't, then go ahead and dislike it. Other than that, I'm Adrian, this is Rabona TV, and have a great weekend. Ciao.